Hi, and welcome to my channel. This is Lindsay with Lindsay Plans. And today I'm going to give my thoughts about the book Dope Sick, Dealers, Doctors, and the Drug Company That Addicted America by Beth Macy. This book for me was a five-star read. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, the, the back cover reads, in this masterful work, Beth, Ma Beth Macy takes us to the epicenter of America's decades-long struggle with opioid addiction. From the creation and distribution of the deadliest, most lucrative painkillers the world has ever known to the courtrooms where greed and, and corruption are starting, to, are starting to be held accountable. From the addicts on the perilous road to recovery to the communities grappling with loss and stigma. The gripping this gripping narrative illumin illuminates the complicated heart of a national crisis as persistent as it's entrenched. Through unsparing yet deeply human stories of the families and first responders struggling to immorate this epi epidemic in politically fragmented times, NACI shows that astonishing astonishingly, the one thing that unites Americans across geographic and class lines is opioid drug abuse. But in a country country unable to provide basic health care for all, Macy still finds a reason to hope. Ample signs of spirit, compassion, and tenacity necessary for those facing addiction to build a better future for themselves, their families, and their communities. Macy does an incredible, incredible job of, one, providing a history of opioid addiction in the United States. I, I've been personally touch as I'm sure most of the country has as far as loved ones who've suffered through opioid addiction. And I, I honestly, I don't think anyone has been unscathed by the opioid, addict, opioid crisis in one way, shape or another. And I didn't realize that like the medical field's obsession with opioids and pain goes back into post-Civil War time. This was not the, this is not the first o opioid crisis we've seen as a country. It's actually the second. There was just so much enlightening information. It reads more like a conversation with a friend. It's so well written. It moves along a lot of nonfiction that I read. Well, very informative and I, I do really like nonfiction. I'll read almost anything, but I'm not into erotica. So I'll read pretty much anything someone hands me. Just this flowed like you were just sitting on someone's back porch and they were just telling you their story. It was just phenomenal. She gives you insight to how dealers become dealers and how most of them aren't necessarily horrible people looking for horrible outcomes. They're just lost people. It's just such, such a very enlightening, enlightening description of a very traumatic situation. She goes into detail as far as how opioids what they do to the brain, how, how people become so dependent on them, why they become dependent on them. And it really, she does a lot to acknowledge and correct a lot of the stigma around addiction. And don't get me wrong, people who are addicted do some horrible things, sometimes unforgivable things. And it's very hard to get past that, especially those who don't want to help themselves, but she explains very well the pathologies and everything that goes along with it. She goes into details with the systems that failed these individuals, that made things worse for them, how our treatment isn't ineffective because we're not we're, we're not really treating a lifetime illness as a lifetime illness where cutting them off too soon and I've always um had the opinion that our current rehab facilities were ineffective due to 
they pretty much just put a band-aid on essentially a fatal wound as opposed to doing long-term care. It, addiction is a lifetime worth of recovery and we wash our hands of people in recovery after three to six months and that's not setting them up for success. There's a lot of factual and statistical information in here that I was not aware of, but I can't say I was surprised by it. She really goes into Purdue and their the timeline of that what they knew when they knew it as far as how they used false studies and blatantly lied about the addictiveness of Oxycontin, which it's not really, there's not really much spoiler alert here, especially since it is a nonfiction account. If if someone's not aware of the Purdue situation, Purdue was the main manufacturer, was the manufacturer who came out with Oxycontin, which was the drug that the majority of opioid addiction stemmed from. And a lot of people were led to heroin from that. They marketed it as being safe, non-addictive, and... It, it was a lie. They knew it was a lie. They were protected by the courts. This was a whole big thing, but this just gives so much more detail, such poignant information from documents and conversations that were had. It's just incredibly informative. And I. it's one of, it's on the list of one of the books I feel people's, should definitely read especially those that have been significantly impacted by the opioid crisis people in social services especially it's just it's a really really eye-opening read and that's pretty much all my thoughts on dope sick so i'm going don't forget to like and subscribe and until next time peace out girl scout